Next, we're going to do buttonholes. Did you notice how many different buttonholes you have up here on row one? From stitch number 25 all the way to 31. And, of course, in your sewing advisor, that is one of the techniques that you can select buttonhole. And then it'll actually make sure to pick the right buttonhole for the type of fabric you're actually working on. So if you're on a stretch fabric, it's going to pick a different buttonhole than if you're on a woven fabric. So we'll just start off with woven medium pick a buttonhole. It tells me I need my automatic buttonhole foot and that's stored in the back here underneath your little accessory tray. You also, did you know you actually have two buttonhole feet? So let's talk about the different feet. This is the one, uh, if all possible, to use because it can sense and you can tell it how long a buttonhole you want to make because of this little red wheel. While we're showing you the red wheel, notice that somewhere along here, there it is, there's a white crown. The white crown needs to line up with the white line prior to starting. So even though you might line it up before you put it on, your fabric, when you slide your fabric in, can sometimes roll that and then move it. And the machine will indicate, please line that up to uh, before starting. So we're just going to go ahead and put that on. The other buttonhole foot I'm holding is just the standard foot without the wheel. So this can do a lot longer buttonholes and some other different kinds. And then there's also a little nub on the back of each one of these. And we're going to show you how to do a corded buttonhole as well. All right, so we're gonna just go ahead, first put the buttonhole foot on, then there's a little plug-in, about halfway from the front to the back of your machine, kind of right behind this light, there is a plug-in. Now here's a note, if you don't get it plugged in all the way, so like you push it up, but you don't click it, click, then you get what I call is a runaway buttonhole. It's gonna start going and going, and it never ever turns around and turns into a buttonhole. So if that's the case, you just didn't get it plugged in far enough, and um, it always happens to like one person in our class, they don't get it pushed in. So just make sure to push it in. Okay, the next thing that you can do is you can take a button and measure it along your uh, centimeters or millimeters here, I should say. Line it up at zero and where this little dotted circle is, you can then see how big of a buttonhole you need. So you need 16, this one says 16 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and on screen, tell it that's the length that we want. And no, that's not because it, it knew I wanted to do this. The default setting is 16. So right here where the picture of the button and the arrow up and down is, plus that or minus it to be the exact size you need. And now we're actually ready to sew our buttonhole. So I'm checking to make sure that the white crown is right where I want it. Also too, the buttonhole is gonna go away from you, so don't start at the top for your first one. I always tell people when you're testing it, start right in the middle of your fabric, and then that way you can see it. Make sure that the white crown is lined up with the white line and go ahead and step on the foot control. Notice what it's gonna do is it's gonna stitch back a straight line and then it's gonna go ahead and do a satin stitch over that straight line back towards us. Just keep up your foot on the foot control until the whole entire buttonhole is done. The tension's been reduced so it's gonna be a really pretty satin stitch. Then it goes back and does the right side, a line straight back and attack at the top and then it's zigzagging back down the second side. It's going to tack at the bottom and do some locking stitches. There's the locking stitches and it's programmed for the automatic cut and lift. So all you have to do is pull that out and there's your perfect buttonhole. If you're thinking that should be about right, maybe do one more. You can test it and see where it is. So let's just do this. I'm going to do the keyhole buttonhole, which is number 29. And that one also requires this particular foot, yes. And it also has a little picture on screen for stabilizer, which would be true, you would have interfaced the back of your fabric. If you didn't, um, a little piece of tearaway stabilizer would be great. Okay, the screen also shows of where it's gonna start. Ah, here's the message that you get if the white crown is not lined up. So it says adjust white area to white line. And that means the little red mark against the, or white mark against the red wheel. So I'm gonna lift up the presser foot, just adjust this, there we go, and then we'll do our keyhole buttonholes. So keyhole buttonholes are for the buttons that have a shank, so like a coat button. So it's gonna have kind of a little key at the bottom. So went ahead and did the length first, and then it's doing the key, and then it'll come back up, do the tack at the top, and then return back down to where the key is made.
All right, so there is our keyhole buttonhole. It's amazing. Now, again, you can use a buttonhole cutter, which is what I like to do to cut these open to get a nice clean cut. But before you open them up, do a little fray check and then wait about five minutes, let that dry. And so when you slice them open, there's a nice clean seal on the raw edges of the fabric. Okay, let's go ahead and do a manual buttonhole next. So we're gonna go ahead and do, let me see which one is a manual one for today. Just picking a manual one. Let's do number 27. So this will have a little bit different setup, meaning you are in control of the length. So as we stitch, okay, so manual buttonhole, and then like I said, we'll do that corded buttonhole next. Okay, so manual buttonhole, that means you wanna mark with your fabric marker, your start and your stop. It is gonna start here at the bottom and go back up, and I can know that because on the screen, it shows me my starting position. Okay, so this is where you can lower the presser foot, lower it again, and then now it's hovering so I can see, I can move my fabric so I can move it right to where my needle will be on that line. All right, so what we're gonna do, this is actually stitch number 27, kind of like a stretch buttonhole. Okay, when I get to the line at the top, I'm gonna touch the reverse button one time. And that little symbol of the reverse button is showing on your screen to remind you you need to do that. It does the tack, and now it's gonna do the little, it's kind of like little X's all the way back down the other side here. Again, it does not know where we started, so I'm gonna stop my machine manually and then touch the reverse button again, and that will give us the last stitching, which will be the tack at the bottom and the locking stitches. All right, so here's that particular buttonhole done in a manual version, which means that if I needed to do one that's like three inches long or longer, I could do it, do it with the manual, um, manual setup. You can do any of these buttonholes with the manual setup as well. All right, let's do a corded buttonhole, and I'll do it with the automatic one. All right, there was that little nub on the back, so watch where we're gonna put some cord there. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up for buttonhole number 25, yes? We'll plug this in in the side, okay, right behind the light. Once you kinda know where it goes, it's a little easier. You can kinda find it by feel. And our cord, you need some type of like a gimp cord. This happens to be a pearl crown rayon. The rayon being that's a little bit slippery, but once I get it started, it does hold nicely. So once again, we'll put our fabric underneath. We'll move the red wheel to find the white crown. Other way, here we go, there. Okay, so this accorded buttonhole is done in such a way that you have a stable button hole. So something on some fabric that wants to stretch, this will work. That little tongue in the back is going to hold the buttonhole cord. And once the presser foot comes down, let's do the 16 millimeter long buttonhole again. The cord will actually run right in the grooves on the underneath side of the foot. See, I'll show you here. See the two grooves? So the cord's actually kept kind of straight. So the, the zigzag is not um, cutting into that cord at all because once it's done, we're gonna give this little cord a pull. Okay, there's the tack at the top. It also makes this a nice filled in buttonhole. It almost makes it look like it has a raised look to it. It's really, really pretty. Almost, when you see it, you'll pretty much say, well, why don't I cord all my buttonholes? All right, so look how heavy it looks. It looks very filled in. Then you're gonna take one of the cords at the bottom and just give this a little bit of a pull and that will just disappear right in at the top. And then what we'll do is just trim these right next to the end as close as possible. And if there's any bit sticking out, all you need to do is give it a little pull. And then here, we'll just even trim these little thread, that thread off so it doesn't show at all. And look how pretty of a buttonhole that is. It is awesome. And again, very stable, so it's not gonna stretch out on you at all. You can also find videos for our sewing on buttons and also the eyelet is uh, videos that we have done to go with this machine.